Welcome back to the News at 10. Former presidential candidate and Afeni Fere leader, Chief Olu Falaye, says he did not receive 100 million naira from the former National Security Advisor, Lieutenant Colonel Sambo Dasuki, for election campaigns of his political party. He told Channels Television this evening that the money he received was from the former national chairman of the PDP's Board of Trustees, Chief Tony Aneni. He says the sum was received on certain conditions. It is absolutely false. I never had any dealing whatsoever with the former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki. No relationship at all. All that I know was that Chief Tony Aneni, chairman board of trustees of PDP, approached me before the last election to seek the cooperation of my party, SDP, uh, with his own party in re-electing the former president in the, what they would call uh, an inter-party cooperation agreement. I gave him six conditions before we could agree to that request. One was that his government must prosecute the insurgents in the Northeast more seriously. Two, that we are not happy with the level of corruption in their government. I, I, if we are to support them, they must pledge to adopt a policy of zero tolerance for corruption. Three, that they will expeditiously restructure Nigeria by implementing the report of the 2014 National Conference. Four, that they will pursue the creation of jobs for the masses as a priority. Five, that they will reduce the current expenditure, so to the great capital funds for development. And six, that if they win the election, if they accept those conditions, they will support them. So that is what we have done if I go. And that if they win the election, we'll expect to play some role in the new government. Those are the six conditions I gave him. And I accepted them in my discussions in my house here in Agure. After the discussions, he left. And for, to formalize the matter, I wrote a letter to him, conveying those six conditions and asking him to confirm acceptance. A few days later, I wrote back to accept all those conditions and to say that all the organs of their party agreed to those conditions, in fact, that they were happy with them and they were ready to cooperate with us uh, on that basis. So with the exchange of letters, we had an agreement, which I then presented to my party as co We approved the arrangement. And um, after that, he phoned me and said, you know, the SDP was a poor party. We need money to campaign uh, for the president and for other candidates that he would like to send us some money. And he did so, which was the 100 million that talking about, which I then passed on to the SDP party, which then allocated the money to the various state branches of the party for the presidential other elections. That is what that happened. The voice of former presidential candidate and Afeni Ferry leader, Chief Olu Falaim. Figurative art is described as artwork that is derived from real object sources. And Chidi Kuberi, who has been drawing and painting since his childhood in Waya, southeastern Nigeria, has made this his forte. He has devoted his time and energy to learning the basic principles of perspective, still life, and figurative drawings. Our review tonight looks at the Chidi Kuberi works in this exhibition, Point of View. Figurative drawing has been a lifetime work for Chidi Kubiri, who was born in Abia State, Southeast Nigeria, but has spent over two decades in Germany. And so his art now reflects influences from the Dusseldorf Art Academy laced with his local roots. Art is very, very important to the society and we should really take it serious. One of the avenues to know the, the culture and history of people, so it's, uh, it's very important and it should be also good for the government to try to support, promote and you know, make sure that the art, that everybody's getting something out of the art. In the course of his career, this artist developed a process of dripping paint on canvas to create a series of dots that form his images in different vibrant colors in an exhibition called Point of View where he gives the audience a chance to get to know his art more deeply. 
almost like a personal touch. The Queen is a study I did on a, on a lady, you know, and for me, this lady is, is this person is just the queen for me. She's beautiful, very, very poor in the village, and I, you know, I try to do this paint. It's not a portrait of her. I did decide, I did decide my own interpretation. This is part of my points, you know, my views. Catching at young is also essential. They're supposed to be at education in the primary school. When I was a kid, I was in the school. I did hand, they call it handicraft. He has exhibition inside and outside the country and has many awards under his belt. Sports is now Commonwealth gold medalist Odwaya de Kuroes has confirmed she's ready for this year's Rio Olympic Games. The wrestling champion who is back home after competing at the Indian Professional League says she gained valuable experience from the tournament. She says winning gold and emerging best wrestler at the Indian League is good motivation as she looks forward to the Olympics. Adekore admits that her Olympics preparation and success also depends on the program of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation and the National Sports Commission. The dynamic duo of uh, Barcelona's Lionel Messi and Real Madrid's Cristiano Ronaldo will, for the seventh time in eight years, go head-to-head -head for the title of world's best footballer at the 2015 FIFA Ballon d'Or on Monday night in Zurich. The only time the last seven years uh, when they did not finish 1-2 was in 2010 when the Barcelona trio of Messi, Andres Iniesta and Xavi swept the podium. Messi is however seen as an overwhelming favourite to lift the trophy again for a fifth time after calendar year in which despite losing two months of injury, he inspired Barker to a Champions League, La Liga and Kings Cup treble. Barker's Neymar is the other contender on the short list. In tennis and inspired, Milos Raonic beat Roger Federer 6-4, 6-4 to win the Brisbane International earlier today and avenges defeat to the Swiss master in the last year's final. Federer was off colour from the start of the game to Pat Rafter Arena and his 25-year-old opponent feasted rapid, repeatedly on his wayward backhand. The victory was Raonic's eighth tour title and complete the perfect build-up to his bid for a made a maiden grand stamp at the Australian Open, which starts later this month. In the women's event, Victoria Azarenka edged out German fourth seed Angelique Kerber 6-3-6-1. In the Brisbane International Final, the former world number one has been plagued by injury over the last two years, but the world number 22 showed little sign of rust this week on her way to a second Brisbane crown. The Belarusian dropped only 17 games over five matches during the tournament and claimed her first title since the Cincinnati Masters in August 2013. Azarenka is in hunt for a third Australian Open crown after winning back-to-back -back Australian Open titles from 2012 and has reached the U.S. Open final twice. <laughs> Egypt's parliament has met for the first time in over three years. This comes after the previous Islamist-dominated legislature was dissolved by a court ruling in 2012 the new parliament of Egypt is expected to ratify over 300 new laws issued in the next 15 days. Newly elected members of parliament were sworn in, after which they were due to elect a speaker and two deputies. Egypt's parliament comprises 568 elected members and is dominated by an alliance loyal to President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. 
Medical charity Médecins Sans Frontières has confirmed four people were killed at one of their hospitals in Yemen after being hit by a missile. The doctors are unsure, however, whether the hospital was hit in an airstrike by warplanes of a Saudi-led coalition or by a rocket fired from the ground. But they did say they sighted planes overhead at one time. One projectile flattened hospital buildings and injured at least one other, which landed nearby. The agency says three of, its, of those injured in the strike were its staff, two of whom are in critical condition. Ten people are also said to have been wounded in the attack. It's not the first time MSF hospitals have been hit by missiles. Last October, one of their hospitals was destroyed in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, while a clinic was hit last month. Both strikes have been attributed to coalition aircraft. And the main news again. Sariake Dixon has been re-elected as governor of Bielsa State in today's rerun election. The governor attributes his victory to the polls at the polls to the people of Bielsa State and his team. He's also promised more socio-economic reforms. At least 2,000 deportees have been dumped on Nigerian soil in Calabar, the Cross River State capital, from the Republic of Gabon. And Egypt's parliament has resumed for the first time in three years. This comes as supporters of President Abdel, Fas Abdel Fattah al-Sisi form the majority. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.